Okay, so I've managed to find a post machine for our broken Monroe. Uh, you see this one also has pieces falling out, but hopefully um, it will have enough good ones that we can use. I'll flip up the top here, maybe. That one comes down, this one, there we go. Uh, you can't really see in there. Let's get this carriage off. So, take notice on this one, you see it has the big spring over here and the small spring on the other side. That's going to be important when we put it back on the other carriage. So, we'll just see if we can take this off. As you can see, first of all, these are very stiff. Second of all, it looks like they have all, oh, that one's really stiff. Looks like they have all their teeth, so this should be good to solve our problem with the other one. See that some of them are broken there. Um, the handle on this one is bent way out of shape, much worse than the other one. It won't even, won't even go around, it just hits right there and there. So that's toast. So the main crank here is also toast. It actually looks like it's, you see that? It actually looks like it's been bent down and is hitting against here. So let me see if I can unbend that. Here we can get this off. So that's stuck. Um, this can be useful because um, when I work on the main body of the other machine, I can put this crank on and turn it through manually before I get the motor working if I choose to do so. Take that off and then we'll see if we can bend that back into shape a little bit. Can you even see that? No. Now you can see it. So we'll just see if we can. Oops. Oops. I think I broke it. Oh well, it was already ruined anyway. At least it comes out now. This machine is incredibly stiff. But anyway, the only thing we really need off this machine is those digit wheels. Um, I can still use this to turn the other machine through manually. Um, the other, on the other machine it just has a brass knob here which is pretty hard to grip, but this will be a lot easier to grip and it should definitely turn a lot smoother than this one. So that machine is jammed up, but that's not really important. We'll put that aside for later. And let's get to work on the carriage. Also, this one comes with the clear button, which the other machine is missing, so it'd be nice to have that. Uh, I think that's the only key that that, that that machine is missing. So transfer this over and that should have a full keyboard. But let's get to work on the carriage. So in order to get this shaft out, the first thing you have to take off are these screws on the side. See these things go into these nuts and the shaft goes into the center of this piece. On the other machine, they weren't too bad to take off. My screwdriver is just barely big enough to straddle the, the slots there because you can see there's a hole in the middle. So my screwdriver is just big enough to to fit in there. Um, I'm going to have to hold that with something, I think. We can just take these out. See, this piece comes out, and that's what the shaft goes into. And that's basically the bushing or bearing or whatever you want to call it for the shaft. So now this end of the shaft is free. So I'll just turn it around. So basically, Oh, that's hopefully the same thing on this side. We can't break it loose a little bit close. There we go. So that comes out. So then what you have to do is take these apart. So what these are is these are a pair of locks so that only one shaft can rotate at a time. So when you turn the crank one direction, it's going to rotate one. You see the, the back one move there a little bit? You can 
can see that or not. I turn it one direction, see the back one wants to move a little bit. I'm not sure if I can put the crank on here or not. See the back one moves in one direction. It's a bit stiff, but and as that one's moving, you see this lock is holding that one in place. And then when it's done, the lock snaps back in place. Now you can, I think, override the locks. See if I turn it the other way. Yeah, if I turn it this way, it should drive. Yeah, but it probably won't. Yeah, well, it's not going to drive it right because it's not in place. But basically, these keep one shaft from turning, or just the spring pressure of this keeps one shaft from turning uh, when it's not supposed to. But we have to get these out, so we'll just take the spring off here. Now these will be free. And this is attached to the shaft, so that's why. So this should just lift out now. And the other problem is this thing right here. Oops, then there we go. So that's out. So that off to the side. We can take our two nuts off now. So those off to the side. So this thing just slides off the end. And now we come to battle up the taper pins. So there's one taper pin holding this gear on. So that's the skinny side and that's the fat side. And then there's another taper pin holding the very end one of these on. You can see there is one. I think this is the skinny side. So I'm going to try and tap those out, but most likely I'm going to end up having to draw them out because um, that's just the way taper pins are. So as you can see, I managed to get all of the um, broken digit wheels off of this shaft here. This is the, the one we want to use. So this is the one from the post machine. It's uh, a little bit smaller. Um, you can see. This is the type of stuff that was underneath these things. So these things are basically glued on to the shaft by this old dried grease. Um, it does clean up pretty well with lacquer thinner. You can see this part I cleaned up with lacquer thinner and this comes right off. The only problem is um, you can't really get you know, lacquer thinner to seep down behind it when it's on here. So these are pretty tough to get off. Um, what you can try to do, which you know may or may not work depending on how they're glued on, is you can try and get like a screwdriver behind these pins here. You see the top of the pin. Maybe if it focuses. But you see the top of the pin there that holds the plastic on. You know, you might be able to get a screwdriver behind there to pry on this. If it's just lightly stuck, that might work. Um, otherwise, you're just going to break the plastic and pop the pin down. Um, what you can also try is to take a chisel and put a chisel right here and you know tap on it and that seems to have worked pretty well for me I got all these off um, so right now all of the, the drums like this are soaking in some lacquer thinner to try and clean them up before I put them back on you can see in this shaft there is a little bit of rust here and there like there's some a little bit up here but overall it's not bad and it seems to have cleaned up pretty well a little bit of rust there uh, these ones that are left on are all the good ones, and they spin pretty freely. I put a little bit of oil on them. If any of these were glued on, then I would have had to go further to pull these off to um, clean out the old grease in these, but they don't seem to have that problem, so I'm just going to leave those on. As far as the taper pins, uh, that was not a pleasant experience. So, when you have a taper pin like this, you can see how it's sunken in a little bit. Those ones are generally easier to get out than the ones like this where you can see, you can kind of see how it sticks out both sides, how it has a little nub on the top and a little nub on the bottom. These are the bad kind. With these ones you can put a punch in and, and whale on it and hopefully they'll come out. These ones, if you put a punch on the, the small end and whale on it, it's just going to flatten out and then you'll never get it out. Um, the post machine, I kind of messed up that one, but that's okay because it's the post machine. On the good machine, I was able to get the taper pin out relatively successfully. Uh, I just got a little bit of wallowed out on that hole, but it's not all the way through. It's just um, 
you know, the walled out hole doesn't go all the way through, so the actual hole you see there in the bottom is still the right size. What happened was I tried to drill the table pin out and my drill bit broke off in the hole, so I thought I would try to drill that out, and of course that didn't work. Then I realized that the drill bit being broke off in that hole actually gave me something hard to tap on, so um, I could just put my punch on the end of the broken off drill bit and wailed on it, and then I was able to get the pin out. You can see this is the pin, so it looks like my drill bit was starting to come out the side, and that's when it broke off. But you can see the end there is just right there's the end of the drill bit. So putting the punch on that and hitting on it drove the pin out um, because obviously the drill bits are hardened, so they won't mush over like the soft steel pin will. So that actually turned out to work out pretty well. And you can see the pin came out pretty much all in one piece and preserved the integrity of the hole. You can see the other side is perfect. And the hole through the shaft is not messed up in any way. So that's good. I think when I put these back on, I'm going to try and use cotto pins and see how that goes because I don't want to have to deal with taper pins in the future. Um, so. Um, I also noticed that the plastic on the parts machine wheels is a little bit darker than the plastic on the original one. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. Let's find this one a little bit darker. So there's definitely a difference there. So I think I'm going to try and use lacquer thinner very lightly to try and clean these up. Um, this is just white paint on it. so. You can see this one. This one I used the lacquer thinner on, and you can see that one is a nice bright white. That's even brighter than the white from the good machine. So hopefully these will clean up with just a little, very, very light application of lacquer thinner. Of course, if you use too much lacquer thinner, you're just going to take the white paint right off, which is not desirable. So hopefully we can do that. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to mention for now. Just that taper pins are evil and you should try and avoid them at all costs. Um, one of the nice things about this end is I was able to hold this end and because it has this little notch here, this end actually was able to be held like this so that I could work on this end and actually line the taper pin right up with the top of the taper pin where I needed it to be. So that's kind of cool. So I think I'm going to finish cleaning up the drums here and then we can start putting this back together hopefully. So just to note, um, most of these things here have this pin on them. That one's kind of stuck, but there we go. So that, if it focuses, that's spring loaded there. And that pin goes into these divots on the back of the wheel as a detent. Um, you can see that pin is just a or a staff with a thicker head on it with that surrounded. Um, the special thing is that this fat thing here, instead of having the whole shaft, has just the head. And that just sits in a little hole here and it's uh, spring loaded. And you can, I'm not sure if you can see, but one side is flat and one side is round. So the round side is going to go out into those divots. So uh, make sure, if you're working on one of these, make sure you don't lose this. That's very small and it can fly out at any time because it is spring loaded. So, uh, just to mention there, um, I think there was a specific place where this goes because I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it might ride in this thing. Um, now, this is the carriage from the post machine, so you can see the carriage is smaller, but in, the, in our carriage for the, the good machine, um, I think it has one of these two, and I think that this round thing, you can see how it's kind of worn there. I think that's going to ride in here. So that is a uh, position dependent. Let me just get the carriage and see. Yeah, so you can see when this goes in like this, this cutout here lines up with the worn spot on the round one. Well, they're all round, but the fat one. Um, so make sure you get that in that position. I don't know if it would matter if it's in the wrong position, except that maybe because this is, you know, skinnier, you know, maybe it might catch on the pin spring there. I'm not sure about that. But just know that this lines up with 
this thing here. So um, I'm just going to finish cleaning up. The rest are pretty much cleaned up now. See, I have in the lacquer thinner and then cleaned out the inside so they'll slide on nice and easy. Um, this surface you want to be pretty clean because this is what is going to ride on the inner surface. No, it's not. It's going to ride on this surface. So it's going to ride like that. So make sure that's pretty clean. Um, you can see on this side there's a, a step down. And that's because that actually goes inside the center of the wheel there. You can see that slides in. And that's what it rides on. And that keeps everything spaced out so that the wheels don't bind up. So that this, the end of this piece, will ride against the flat, will sit against the flat surface of the bottom one, and then the wheel sits on it and is pushed against there. And then this provides the spacing so that you can't pinch the wheels against it. So it's a pretty simple system. Um, not much to say about it, uh, other than just make sure that you get this lined up, and obviously make sure you put the wheels on the right way. Uh, hopefully that shouldn't be too hard. The side with the divots in it goes towards the, the spring pin and the flat side goes away from that. And of course you want to make sure that all your, that when you, you, know, you put it on this way, you're going to know because your numbers are upside down. But anyway, now once I get these back on, I'm going to see if I can clean these up to make them all match. They're not the right color. I'm not sure if that's because the parts machine is older or, you know, maybe it belonged to somebody that smoked. Not quite sure about that. I, I would think they're the same plastic, but I don't know. We'll have to see how they clean up. You see, I've got this all back together here. Um, when you put this gear on the end, you want the flat spot, you need the flat spot on top, to pretty much line up with the cutout in the other end. See this cutout here? Let me get this all on camera. You can see the cutout's pointing up and the flat spot's pointing just about up. Um, this, uh, I mean, the pin only goes in one way, so just have it so that these two are more or less lined up and the pin will align it the rest of the way. Uh, you just don't want to get it 180 out because this has to be flat here so that when you turn the crank for clear in the opposite direction, um, it doesn't drive this register at all. So that's why that's there. Um, yeah, I put a uh, cardo pins in here. This one, I'll take a look at that. This one doesn't seem to have the detent. The pin must be stuck or something. So I'm, I'm gonna take a look at that. Um, you can see I've got the pins in here. This wiggles just a little teeny tiny bit because it's the cardio pin is not a um, interference fit like the table pins are, but I think it'll be okay. Um, there's not a whole lot of stress on this piece. The only stress that there is is of the you know, the clearing thing is grabbing onto these wheels and it's turning past the detents as it clears them. So I think that would be just fine. I'm gonna take a look at this one that's not, so you can see the difference here, this one, detents, this one's pretty much free floating, so I'm gonna take a look at that. I didn't notice that when I was putting it together, but other than that, no, no maybe it's working. Yeah, now it seems to be working. Okay, so the pretty much jar just got unstuck a little bit there. Now it's unstuck. Yeah, all these are nicely detented. I'm going to clean them up with lacquer thinner very carefully, and then they should be ready to go back in. Okay, so you see it cleaned up pretty well. Um, so it definitely looks whiter, but I think it'll be okay. Um, definitely, most of the yellowness went away from these ones. So, I should be ready to go back in now. Don't forget to put uh, this thing back on and put the nuts back on. And we should be able to just lift this up. Pretty much just sit it right in, like that. And then we'll just um, put some oil on these things. These are the end caps, so. Okay, so I got it back in. Um, the end of that, that shaft was messed up a little bit, so I just cleaned it up, and now it fits just fine. So, I used the slightly less bent of my two cranks. I turn it this way, that shaft rotates. 
should, of course, would be better if my crank wasn't messed up. Let's see if we can do something about that. So if I put some random numbers in here, and you can see on the front, just playing with these a little bit, you can see on the front, oh, this one doesn't always detent, but anyway. And we'll put some random numbers in this register too. That's going to have to be oil. It's a bit stiff. Go to my stupid crank. Look at that. Okay, so anyway, the point is you see I've got some numbers in the top and some numbers in the bottom. Now, if I turn the crank one direction, I have to hold this up here a little bit. See it clears the top one. I turn it the opposite direction. See it clears the bottom one. So that seems to be working. Um, we're just going to clean up the. We'll put some oil on this fighter so since that's a bit stiff. So the way that this works, by the way, is you can see this shaft in the middle. If you look down at it, you can see that it kind of has little things here that stick off when they stick down and kind of out the front a little bit. It's kind of hard to see the front ones, but. Um, basically what happens is when you um, when you start turning the crank, um, these two gears have a one directional clutch in them, so when you turn the crank one way, one of them engages, and you turn the crank the other way, the other one engages to drive the different shafts. And when one of the shafts starts rotating, you can see this thing is attached to that center shaft, and it's got two little pegs here. So when this shaft starts rotating, this peg pops up and rotates the fingers on the front of the shaft out, into this register. When this one starts rotating, it rotates the shaft the other direction and pops fingers, pops the fingers so they, they stick back out into this register. And then as the shaft, as this whole shaft rotates, these little pins here are caught on those fingers so that it stops the wheel at um, exactly zero. So basically this shaft is going to rotate and as it rotates, these numbers, these drums are going to rotate with it until this peg hits the finger on this shaft and then when that, when that happens, the shaft keeps rotating, but the digit stays still at zero. And basically the same principle for this shaft. So you can see I've rolled these up. These are much freer now. So, I should be able to perform a clear. Actually, you can watch this one from the back. I'm not sure how much you'll be able to See, but watch, you can see this shaft will rotate just a little bit um, for both operations. You can see that this gear stays still while this one rotates. See that? And you can see the shaft pops back just a little bit at the end. And if I go the other way, you can see this gear rotates, this one stays still. That shaft rotates out so that the fingers interfere with that register. Then flip it over. See, we have all zeros in both registers. So, I think that should be good. Um, so, I think that's going to be about it for this video. The next video will be getting the actual machine to work, um, since the machine doesn't work either. But I just I wanted to take care of this first because I figured this would be quite a pain, and it was quite a pain fighting with the taper pins and the dried grease and everything, trying to get this apart. Um, but it seems to be successful, so of course the real test will be whether it works on the machine, but it should. Um, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.